What is this? This is the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee L, the three-row yes. Summit Reserve. That just means it has everything you could possibly buy Press car spec. for this vehicle, truck, SUV. And when you say Jeep, I think four-door. You do. When you say Jeep, Todd thinks Wrangler. I think two-door Wrangler. This we have has been our life experience. Different yes. perception. Yes. Because my first car was a Jeep Cherokee in 1977. It was my dad's mm-hmm. old rust bucket. And you know what? <laughs> it worked. It was great. Yeah. That's yeah. when I was introduced to Quadratrack, something called Quadratrack. That just means yeah. all-wheel drive. That just means it sucks your fuel tank dry. You can watch the needle like all-wheel drive all the time. <laughs> And that's what this has. It's multiple generations past that one. But I've got a soft spot for Jeeps. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. Road trips, comparisons, test drives, and podcasts. This is Everyday Driver. I just want to start with style. Okay. This is distinctive in the market. Of all the SUVs out there, I'll take that. I feel yep, like this good. is distinctive good. because yep. Jeep has used their signature seven inlet front grille yep. to yep. great effect. Mm-hmm. And the trapezoidal design shapes around the car are very signature. There's, there's some places where that's, it gets fussy, but it's very detailed mm-hmm. and it does look particular in standing out against everything else. Yes, and you which can I like. identify it pretty soon. As soon as you see it once, you will always know that this is the Jeep. Yeah. You're not going to think it's anybody else in the market. Right behind the five-seat SUV, the unibody seven-seat is the next most crowded market. I mean, this yeah, is where is. the Mazda CX-90 lives, the Telluride, the Palisade. Yeah. Above this, the Wagoneer is the body-on-frame suburban competitor. Mm-hmm. This is the unibody yeah, lesser that's a competitor good point. for Telluride yeah. and Palisade, and think of that level. Even though this feels bigger than those, it isn't actually a suburban competitor. Not really, no. And for that reason, I kind of like it because, mm. as good as the Expedition, the Suburban, they're huge. We do like them. Yes, but they are just huge. Uh huh. When it's just you and the truck, it's just absurd and obnoxious. Yeah. But this is. I feel like the right size. I really feel like Jeep worked hard on this, knowing the three row would be coming. And mm-hmm. I like this size because it's still roomy. The, the third row is not. It's not for adults. True. If you are searching okay. for a minivan okay. and thinking about it, you should be looking at the Grand Cherokee L. This okay. is the sweet right. spot. Yeah. Because it does most minivan things without being a minivan. And by the way, you can take it off road. That's what Jeeps are designed for. If you're watching because you want a Grand Cherokee or any Jeep, You need Autotempest.com to search all the car markets and even research dealers. Autotempest helps you search nationwide across all the used car sites, including Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Plus, you can get email alerts so you never miss a listing. We use it to research for our podcast, to search for crazy road trip cars, and just because we like to dream. And Autotempest can even help with new cars, pricing out the options and getting local dealer quotes. So if you're looking for a Grand Cherokee L or any seven-seater, autotempest.com slash everyday can get you the help you need. Autotempest. All the cars, one search. Now the Overland flavor of this is the one with skid plates. That's the tougher, more trail-rated version. If you're going to do serious off-roading, look at the Overland flavor. This is the Summit Reserve. This is going to be the on-road version kind of like the most luxurious minivan you can imagine. It's on-road with legitimate off-road history. Yep. And it's not like Jeep hasn't tested all of the versions. But I will say the problem is that this is $73,000 and that's more expensive than any minivan on the planet. Well, it's $73,000 with a V6. Yes. And on this one, you can opt for that brilliant 5.7 liter V8 with 357 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. And that is what will make this thing move. Mm -hmm. That is also the only way you can get this with the maximum 7,200 pound towing capacity. Otherwise, the way this is equipped is that V6. 290 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. So that that means, as a result, you lose 1,000 pounds of towing capacity. So it's 6,200. It's very competitive. Yeah. in this unibody class, but the V8 makes it a much more all-purpose usable thing, and also, it drops to zero to 60 in like two seconds. And the miles per gallon don't <laughs> drop as much as you think. Miles per gallon on this combined is only 18. The well, V8 is like this 14 is or 16. 20. 18 city, 25 highway, okay. and then it's like 20, 21. Let's hope for the best. So, you know, <laughs> You're gonna be burying bad. your foot though, because I think this is underpowered. I think this is underpowered as well. And if you're just looking to not go off-road and just have the SUV, the hauler, the V6 is for you. But if you want to do serious off-roading, serious towing, and you know you're gonna have this thing 
loaded up with people and gear, yeah, yeah. consider the V8. It's also noisy, and it's not noisy in a good, friendly way. Mm-hmm. It's kind of ugly noisy. It's ugly crying all the time. Over 4,000. <laughs> ugly five, crying. It kind of is. There's the title. <laughs> it sort of is. I mean, on an on-ramp, you're at it five or 6,000 yeah. RPM, and I'm going... Yeah. Where is the torque? Why doesn't it feel like it has power to get this thing going? It weighs 5,100 pounds. Well, yeah. I that's, mean, once that's you're moving, a good factor. Once you're moving, it's fine. Yeah. But it's just those acceleration moments. The Jeep name will take any shame or embarrassment out of, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of life off-roading. Like, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah you yeah. got the Jeep. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter if it's trail rated or not. It still has the quadra lift suspension mm-hmm. right down here. And this instrument panel is very well designed. It is. The little flap here, that that will give you your selections between all the different modes. If you go to snow mode, it'll turn the headlights on for you. And if you want to go all the way to rock crawl mode, which it can do, you have to put it in four-wheel drive low first, get it in neutral, four-wheel drive low, and then it'll go into the mm. tallest settings. So then you've got uh, the, the quadra lift system over the here on the right. The that'll put it really high if you have that. Yeah, you, and of course, this way, one has that. way, way yeah. up, which yeah. is great. Expeditions and Suburbans, yeah, they've got four-wheel drive capability too. This is the the sweet spot with the size Mm. and the the off-road capability. Size is a big question here because do you need the big boy? And if you don't need the real full-size Suburban size, which you'd get the Wagoneer, Mm -hmm. then this is a really viable option. And this is also a very successful part of the market. My struggle is that 73 grand because that is a lot to not be in the V8 and Agreed. It also, it's is another four enough, grand to get the V8. It, it's enough to now be in the lesser versions of the bigger models. Well, and that's sure. a bit of a concern that as well. Have a V8. Yeah. So yeah. that that's a bit of a concern as well. And then you are getting even extra space. I mean, the the seven seat discussion certainly once you start talking about towing really is about utility and tons of space. Mm-hmm. And the body mm-hmm. on frame ones, including the Wagoneer from Jeep, are bigger and better at that. They are also more expensive. But you, more expensive. But it's seventy three grand. You you've started to get into that market. I mean, legitimately. With, with a V8, we're touching eighty by the time I know. you're done. I know, and eighty is yeah. a lot of suburban. This is the right size. I mean, it's big, but it's not too big. Mm, okay. From parking standpoint, or you're not always full of people in gear, and you want a longer sure, load space sure, back sure, there. Sure, yeah. So when you open the rear, you'll see the two rear seats. They are power operated right on the the side of the vehicle, but then you can operate the the two middle seats. You can release those. So that is nice. A lot of cars have that. The Chevys do. It's well thought out. It's a lot of nice interior thinking here. This is still one of the best infotainment systems on the market, and it's only gotten better. It is good. It's excellent to use. Wireless, Apple CarPlay, and uh, Android Auto. Mm -hmm. I really like the layout of things, except for one big glaring thing. Okay. And that is the reflectivity of all the piano black. There's a lot of it. Why would you do piano black? I thought we were past this. Can I close this just to get even more? The worst of Darth Vader's accessories is in this, and it's never going to be clean. It looks like something that he didn't put on from his armor, and it's just this weird covered in fingerprint reflective. It looks like cheap plastic. Mm. It, It looks shiny, and shiny things mean luxury, right? Only when they're clean. They will only be clean at the dealership. Clean. Look at the fingerprints around yes. the shift knob. And Anything you'll touch. And this should be a different material. Every other material in here, Jeep got right. Mm-hmm. This open pour wood, the stitching, the quilted leather on the seats, everything else feels yeah. Yeah. upscale and luxurious, but still kind of rugged. What else could they do right here? All kinds mm. of metal patterns and other textiles. Mm. There's other things that should be considered than the gloss piano black. I thought we were past this. I, I thought it was starting to I reduce we were like in the model. Five and then years I climb in here and was like, yikes, there's a lot of it in here again. That's too bad. I agree. It doesn't say $73,000, even it doesn't. though the only thing really holding me back is Interesting. the okay. power on this. Otherwise, I really like it. This is a consideration. It drives tighter and more eager and anxious okay. than the Suburban or the Expedition. It, for sure. It's because, kind yeah. of ready for something. In spite of the fact it weighs as much as it does, it doesn't feel like it weighs 5,100 pounds. No. I agree with that. Yeah. No. Styling exterior-wise is very distinctive. Sets it apart. The interior is excellent. I like being here. I would definitely consider one of these if I were in the market for this. Interesting. Except for the back seats, they're tight, but many of these three rows in this size are very tight back there. They're just offering them as the temporary you got them. Yeah. kind of thing. Most sure. people getting sure. seven seaters aren't putting adults in every space. No, yeah, not all the time. So it's My your turn. turn. Yep.
this SUV makes me think of that that game, that mental exercise you and I have played since we started this show. Mm. And that is this game. Cover up the badge. Oh. Think about what it is. Hmm. Or drive it as if it's not the badge. And I do have to say, you sit down in here, if you didn't know what this was and you looked at it, you would never guess Jeep interior. You don't think so? Ever. Really? Be- because it feels nicer than you expect. Nicer than what you know Jeeps to be? Think about the rugged nature of a Jeep. You don't climb in here and think, yeah, this this looks like a Jeep. No, this looks great. You've got your own screen over there. Not that you necessarily needed it, but you screen. have your own screen. This has great materials with really good material breakup, a very nice, pleasing design. This feels really, really expensive, and it has a Jeep badge on it. I look around further. I see Macintosh on the audio what what brand is this this sounds really good it sounds great 19 I, speakers when i think jeep i think rugged and i get in this interior and i go this is a jeep and i mean that as a huge compliment yeah that, that is a yeah. place where some of the money has definitely gone and you can feel an upscale feel here that is very very nice that actually starts to go okay i understand why you're charging a lot for this the real questions that i have almost all come from the competition because this is still a competitive market. Certainly, yeah. This checks every one of those boxes, but I think this lives in a weird space where it's the biggest and most rugged of that area, the yeah, Tellurides and the yeah. Palisades and the, even the Land Cruisers and that kind of stuff, the Agreed. unibody stuff, but yet it's not quite playing in the area of the Suburbans and the Wagoneers and the Expeditions. It's like a middle ground there. Which is actually a good place to be, I think. I think I for think some people in the market, it. that will help you find your spot because you could load this out and be less than a loaded out Suburban, let's, let's say, yeah, and yeah. you don't need all that capacity. But then I think if you really are shopping for just getting in this market, I think you're better off in CX-90, Telluride, Palisade, those kind of guys. If you're just in this market and it is your family hauler, I think you get more for your money in those brands and those. You yeah. lose the rugged nature. Yeah. You lose the Jeep feel, if you will, that you know has off-road capability. Because this has that big, rugged, like, oh, this it, has a it truck does. feel. It, it drives tr- between truck and SUV. It, it feels almost it's, like it is body on frame even though it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. It has a, like a body on fame frame, really stiff. robust feel I agree. about it. And that is yeah. very interesting, especially when you consider the air suspension and everything else. So it feels like the mini version of the big boys or the big versions of the one below it. And that's a yeah. fascinating middle yeah. ground. And so you have to figure out what are you looking for? What are you drawn to? If you're looking at the Suburbans or the Expeditions or even the Wagoneer and going 90 grand, may I present 73 or 75? And you're almost yeah. there. Yeah, agreed. But if, agreed. You're, if you're a family that's looking at a minivan alternative and you've got 50 grand to spend, you no, can now no. consider the things like the CX-90 or the Telluride or those kind of things where you're not in a minivan, but you get those this kind of feel. And I think you did better with your money than you did here. This is in a, a middle ground for me that I that I, I, deba- I could debate either side. I really could. Sure. So you that's that's that not good. That, that sounds bad. You're at 5,000 RPM trying to pull this thing up a hill. Mm-hmm. And it's just you and me. That is not a nice sound to listen to. It's a bad noise. You it's have to noise. dip way into the throttle to get the mm-hmm. torque out of this thing to, yep. m- to move. This thing just needs the power to go along with the rugged nature. Yeah. People will even buy it for the perception or the thinking that I'll change my lifestyle and I'll start going <laughs> off-road and going camping more and doing off-road things. There is some it's brand cachet here. You're right. But You're it's right. not the, the smaller ones, mostly front-wheel drive with a little bit of extra <laughs> yeah, rear-wheel fair, drive fair. kick in if it detects wheel slippage. No, this is quadra-track. Yeah, it's doing this it right. This is Jeep here. It's this doing it right, yes. That rugged feel, yes, it's what but you're paying still for. some luxury. It's what you're but paying But they have for. to have this luxury and this feel to compete in that market. They do, especially it's in a considering weird space. if you climb into the Wrangler, Wrangler Unlimited, which is the four-door Wrangler, yeah. okay? That has a good amount of space now. It has a ton of rugged capability. But it's still got an interior that, in spite of a few screens, you really could consider hosing it out. This is not that. The Jeep brand kind of surprised you, and you go, wow, okay, wow. Yeah. Because you can load up a Wrangler Unlimited, and you can touch 60, almost 70 grand. Yeah. And you don't have any of the niceties that this has. But you're doing different things with You that. are doing different things. Different thinking. This is tow the boat or, or tow the trailer, and you're going to go yeah. somewhere, and yeah. you're going to have a big family adventure vacation. This does that really, really well. You see? 
in the cameras. It's got fam cam. Fam cam. Fam cam. You have a camera over the top of each of your next two yes, rows. Yes, I saw And that. you can pick one of them to zoom. So you can zoom in on the littlest one that's being the most destructive or the most concerned. Yes. Or Are they asleep? Is that what they're doing? But Pulling over exciting. isn't an option in no. dealing with the crisis. You also don't have to I'll slap without a, looking. Just you just look at fam cam. Because yeah, you want to pay attention to your driving, which you sometimes, you know, the slap has that. That's so, right. So you just can look. It's got cameras all over this thing, which mm -hmm. is actually great. It needs to. If you're doing off-roading, yeah, you can choose all the different angles of the cameras. And yes. you can even zoom in with the front cam. Is, is that, what is that rock doing? What is that? <laughs> is that rock moving? Is that boulder? <laughs> what am I about to drive over and destroy my undercarriage? Is that a tortoise? What's going on? In. Lots what a, of thinking has gone into this. Did you it's ever great. have that experience growing up where you were with your sibling in the back seat? and your mom caught you before you even did anything. You ever have that experience? All the time. This is the benefit of fam cam. She can actually That's see what you're right. doing. She could be like, stop it. Stop it. You're, you're, just, you're just now moving. She could see you she from no overhead. No it's, longer it's, has eyes in the back of her head. It's God view right <laughs> yes, here. Fam cam solves it, man. It's that amazing. Cool. It's very funny. Look, these were always called the Cadillac of Colorado. I feel like this is kind of back. Mm. It's spent years not on that level of luxury, but here it is, with even with the Grand Cherokee and of course the Wagoneer above Wagoneer this. Wagoneer above it, yeah, for sure. This is kind of back. I want the V8. I agree. It's expensive. Yes. Once you have it at this level, fully loaded out, you do feel like you're getting a lot for your money. And then, oh yeah, it's fully capable of off-roading. You didn't get a that has to be the loaded up point. SUV and like, oh yeah, it's trail rated. Let's go do some serious off-roading. We've got the air suspension. Let's go do that. For normal driving, I wouldn't pick this. I no, really wouldn't. I would there's get others, a myriad of other SUVs to pick in, from. in the competition. Pay less. Probably pay less. Yes. And get something that is as nice or nicer. But this has a rugged, hardcore feel that those don't have. Yeah. And if that's something that you like and feel or you need, then that's where this rises to the top. Well, that's what Jeep is known for. You know it. That's the Jeep flavor right there. Seven slant grill. Let's yeah. go bash into you know, something. Look at all the little Easter eggs all everywhere on the you windows. Look at all this. And I've got fam cam. <laughs>